So to understand how our sprites are going to work when we have rectangle intersection between them, because when we have rectangle shapes, squares and boxes, non-circular objects, we need to do our collision detection or intersection a little bit differently. So I have two squares here, and each square is 100 pixels by 100 pixels wide, so the combined half width is 100, the combined half height is 100. And those two numbers matter because when the distance apart on an axis is less than that, so if we look at the x-axis right there and look at the combined half widths, we can see now as that distance between these objects, look right there, they're nearly touching when the distance apart is 100 and the combined half widths is 100. Now I move over and we can see how as that distance apart on the x-axis becomes less than the combined half widths, that tells us that these two objects are intersecting. Now if I do the same thing on the y-axis, so if we come down, we can see when it's less, we can see they're intersecting. But what needs to happen is the distance on both X and Y, we need to exceed, or be less than, not exceed, but be less than. So it has to be less than that combined width and height number. And then when that occurs, these two objects we know are intersecting. So now let's backtrack and figure out how do we get to this? How can we calculate this information? So I've gone in and so we're going to figure this out. I've added a little bit more information for us to figure this out and I've changed the size and proportion of the boxes. So the red box is 50 by 100, the blue box is 150 by 50. So we have respective combined half widths, combined half heights. And now when I look here, so when the distance is 100 apart, then that would be the combined half width, and we can see where they're nearly intersecting. And when we look at the combined half height, which is 78, and I'm, or 75, and I'm at 78, then we're nearly intersecting. So if we move up, so at this point we would be intersecting. Now we haven't run the code in this sample yet to do something or figure out when that intersection is occurring. So now we're going to determine that code logic. To add in intersection, what we're going to do will be similar to what we did with the main project, or with the catcher game, sorry, main project, the catcher game. So I'm going to make a function, and this will be my rectangle intersect and it's going to take two values I'll pass in the sprite and I'll call that similar to what I'm doing in the code up there um, actually I'm going to leave it even more generic so we'll have R1 and then in this case enemy R2 now it's important when we do this one we notice that we're returning something so at this point, it's going to be looking for neither a return true or a return false because anytime our function returns a value, then we have to return something. So now we have these two parameters that we are going to pass in. And to do our calculation here, what we need to do is figure out what is the distance on the x-axis what is the distance on the y-axis and then I need to find out what what is the combined half widths what is the combined half height so once we have these four values, then we're going to be able to find out what we saw, which is if our distance on the x-axis is less than our combined widths, 
half widths, and if the distance on the y-axis is less than our combined half heights, then we know that an intersection has taken place. Otherwise, we will return false as our value. So let's figure out these calculations. So, so I'll just say my distance on the x is going to be, and this is where we, when we calculate it, we need to once again use that absolute value where we need to figure out what is, which actually I guess I could use the dist function which just does it where we pass in our values, but because we have to do a little bit of uh, extra stuff here, we're going to um, use absolute value. And absolute value means we just take the value of when we subtract two numbers, we don't care if we get a positive or negative value, we just want to know what is the number because that's the actual distance apart. So then if the sprite is on the left, the enemy is on the right, when we subtract the enemy from it, enemy will have a bigger x, so therefore we would get a negative value, but we don't care about the negative, we just care how many pixels apart are these two objects. So what we do is we say abs for absolute, so that negates any negations, it gets rid of any negative signs. So we just do that. Now inside of here, we're going to subtract two numbers. We'll take the position of the sprite, which we'll call R1, and subtract to it from it the position of the enemy, we'll call that R2. So we take R1.x minus R2.x. So now that gets us close, float, oh, I forgot, I put all these comments in for a reason, might as well use them, float dist y is going to be equal to abs r1 dot y minus r, r2 dot y. Now, one thing about doing this is this is, this would work if we had square objects of the same size. But when our objects are not square and are not the same size, we need to do a little bit more work where we have to take and figure out the distance between their centers, not between their x values, because these being rectangles, so if I run this right now, these being rectangles, that if I look at the distance of their centers, the distance of the center right now is should be the same distance as their half widths. But if I just find their empirical distance, so I'm going to um, copy this, paste it in. Uh, now we'll be up to 280 for our next line of text. So if we just take the value of x1 from x2, now, now I'm gonna even get rid of the absolute so we can see when it's a positive or negative, so you can see that. Now when I run this, we can see, oh, whoops, changed the wrong number. This is 50 and this is 280. Let's try again, whoops, all right. So now we can see, see positive, negative, because red is, so red is S, blue. But now if I look here, the distance on the x-axis it says is 50. But if I look at the distance of their center on the x-axis, it's 100. So when we're doing this check, we need to be comparing from center to center because when our objects are not the same size, then it fails if we just go the distance of their x because the x is the top left corner of each object since that's how we're choosing to draw them right now. So we can see if I use absolute, it gets rid of that minus in there. So we're going to put abs back in. Run one more time. So we can see, see now it stays positive the whole time. But right here, it tells me the distance on their 
Oh, but this isn't the center. Let's clean up our language so it looks the same. Distance and x-axis. Here we go, distance on x-axis. And it says it's 50. And it's 50 from the red x to right here. But if I was doing my collision detection, their centers are 100 apart. So this means it's going to fail. So if I'm coming in from the side, it's like, hey, look, we're 163 apart. And now we're only 130. So technically, then we're not intersecting if we're comparing distance on x versus centers. Or, uh, I mean, distance on x versus half width. So we can see how that would fail. So this is why we need to compare centers. So we do that by adding to our x position. We add to that r1 dot width divided by 2. That now gives us the center of that object plus r2 width divided by 2. Well, this would be, um, that's not a slash, there we go, r2 width divided by 2. Now, this also works because when we set up visual objects, we always give them x, y, width, and height. So it's important that we set those values correctly. If we don't set those to the size of the artwork we're looking with, working with or the area we want to consider on the artwork we're working with, because when we use our sprites, the sprite object might not fill the entire pixel dimensions of the image. So we'll have some extra spacing there. So we'll need to pay attention to exactly which numbers we want to make this the most effective. So now let's repeat this process for the height. So plus r1 dot h divided by two and plus r2 dot h divided by two. So now those values are going to work with us correctly. And now So my combined half widths will be equal to, and this is pretty easy, r1 dot w divided by two plus r2 dot w divided by two. So that gives us that, and float combined half height is going to be equal to r1 dot h divided by 2 plus r2 dot h divided by 2. So that now gives us the four values we need to do our uh, calculation. And then to do that calculation, I'll just put some returns so this is in the center of the screen, easier to see. So now we are going to check for x axis collision or wow typing is failing me now and we do that by saying if distance x is less than and So we have uh, combined half widths, a couple curlies returned. So if distance x is less than my combined half widths, that means we collided on the x axis. I mean, if that's not true, then we return false. So then we check on y axis. That will be the same kind of thing, dist y is less than combined half heights. And if that is true, then it's yippee, we are intersecting and we return True. So this whole function 
calculates distances between the objects, then it does some um, comparisons. I have an extra D there. Hey, look it, now it's not red. All right, so we check on the X. If that is not going to be the case, we return false. But if X happens, then we check Y. And then if Y happened, then we return true. So we don't need to put an else. We can just run this if. And when we say return true, what happens is we now exit this function and it sends that value back. So it returns this value and doesn't run any more code. That's why we don't worry about this being out here by itself. But if this is not returning true, if they're not overlapping on the x-axis, then we don't do the, we don't even bother checking y and we return false. So now to put that into play, what we can do is a pretty uh, straightforward kind of thing where we go if and what I need to look at what my name is again so rectangle intersect so if oh I, I was thinking I had to go lower rectangle intersect and then we'll just pass in the sprite and the enemy so we just pass those in so if that is the case that we are intersecting on those two. So if they are intersecting, so if, and what I could do is go equals true. So if you want that little visual confirmation that that's what you're doing here, but because this function returns true or false, by calling that function, we're going to have one or the other value. So if that's true, then I'm just going to set my fill color to a translucent uh, we'll do green this time, 0, 255, 0, comma, and we'll do a transparent green. And then we'll just do a rectangle that fills the screen, 0, comma, 0, comma, with height. So let's try and see. All right, so we got all our text in there telling us what's going on, and boom, intersect, boom, boom, boom. So while they're intersecting, so we can see how it works from all four directions. And when you build your own projects, try out different proportions. Don't just use square objects, but make rectangles tall and wide rectangles. And then test from all four directions to make sure that it is indeed working as you expect.